Okay, so in this video, we have a ball rolling on a straight path, hitting the wall, and then coming back and then sliding down here, and then going back to kind of where we were on the initial position. Since we're graphing a one-dimensional graph, we're going to assume that the position changes from zero in just the x direction, right? So basically the ball goes through something and comes back to the initial position um, with respect to the x-axis. All right, so let's take a look at how we can conduct a position time graph with this. Now, the first part, the bar ball is going to start rolling towards the wall with a uh, positive velocity. So it's not going to be negative, right? So we're going to say this is zero, and this is just going to be the positive x, and then in this direction, we're going to have a negative x. So the ball is going to start rolling towards the wall with a positive velocity, a constant value. So how does that look? That's going to look like a straight line because my position is changing at a constant rate with time. All right, so when it hits the wall, the question actually mentions that it changes its direction, but not the speed as it bounces from a reflecting wall. So the velocity is going to stay the same. However, it's going to start moving in the negative direction. So my position is going to have a negative value. So it's going to actually going to start going this way. So you see, all the way from here to here, I'm going to have a negative. It's going to be towards the negative direction, but with respect to zero, I'm at still at a positive position. So over here, this represents that I'm still on the positive side, but I'm going negative. So it's in moving towards the negative direction. Now for the next part, it looks like that I'm going to start sliding down. Now since I'm going with the gravity, so there's going to be g acting on me, uh, my acceleration is actually going to start increasing. So I'm going to have a positive acceleration, I'm going to have my velocity increasing, and also my position is going to increase with time, um, at, not at a constant rate, but it's going to be increasing like a curve. So how am I going to represent a curve that's still going to be in the positive side but towards the negative direction? Well, if you've watched any of my videos, we've actually discussed the curves and how um, they can represent position and velocity. So let's say if I had a position curve like this and I looked at the velo how the velocity is going to change on this position time graph, um, at this point, in this point. So this the second point actually has a higher slope than the first one. Therefore, that means the slope of this curve is increasing and also in the negative direction because I'm move, going towards the negative. So I would have something like that going here. Now for the last part, so for this section, um, the ball is going to actually go back to the position that it was at, again, a constant velocity. So it reaches a higher velocity than it was at this point. Now, and then it's going to, then it's going to continue going at the same velocity until it reaches the initial x position. So um, I'm going to have to reach the initial x position at a constant velocity. That's it. So if I were to graph this a little bit better, I would graph it this way. I would want a smooth curve. So it would go up and then it would go back down and it would go straight back down. I know it doesn't look like the nicest graph. So um, now let's take, take a look at how we can actually convert this into a velocity time graph. So a velocity time graph would be the slope of a position time graph. Therefore, I'm going to take a look and see what the slope of this line would be. This is a constant positive number. So I'm going to have this for my velocity for the first part. For the second part, I had the ball rolling back. So it was just this part, right? It's the same velocity, but it's in the um, negative direction. Therefore, I'm just going to have the... Um, so from here to here, I'm going to have my velocity going the same value I had up there in the negative direction. Now for the curved part, I have my velocity increasing in the negative direction. So how do I know if I have to graph it like this 
or do I have to graph it this way? Okay, so if I had to graph it this way, I would have my velocity decreasing in the negative direction. How so? It's because at this point, for example, let's say if I had a negative 3, at this point I would have a negative 2. Let's say if I'm going at negative 2 meters per second or negative 3 meters per second, at which speed am I moving faster? So negative just means at a different direction, right? So it just means that it, you're not going into the positive direction. So ignoring the sign, three meters per second is a lot is going a lot faster right so therefore this wouldn't be correct because I'm going from three meters per second to two meters per second so I'm slowing down therefore if my uh, velocity is supposed to increase I'm gonna have to graph it this way this represents my graph increasing its speed in the negative direction. So I'll just give you another pointer here. So let's say if this was negative three and this was negative four, it, uh, am I going faster if I'm going at negative three meters per second or, or am I going faster if I'm going at negative four meters per second? I'm going faster if I'm going at negative four meters per second because negative only means that I'm going in the negative direction. Okay, I hope you understand that. If you have any questions, comment below and I can go over this again. Now for the last part, this is a straight line with a negative slope. That means that my um, I just have a negative velocity and it's constant, so it's just going to look like that. Now for my acceleration time graph, it's going to be the slope of the previous graph. Therefore, I'm going to just quickly do that for you. For the first part, the velocity of a horizontal line is just zero. So I'm just going to graph a straight line here on the um, zero axis. For this part also, again, zero acceleration. That's what I'm going to have. Now for here, I have a negative slope. So therefore, I'm going to have a negative number here. It is a constant value, so it's not changing. So it's going to be a straight line. And I have another, for the last part, I have another zero acceleration there you go hope you like this video if you like it like it comment below if you have any questions and subscribe thank you